morning. morning. Everybody can hear me? Yes. yes? Okay. Oh, now I can hear myself. I was like, like Alice too. I was like, oh, it's contagious. I'm losing my... Welcome to Dobbins Memorial United Methodist Church. I am Pastor Waleska. Happy 4th of July. Woohoo! It is so nice to see everybody with their, with their colors. I know finding red was a struggle. I don't know why, but it was. <laughs> so I'm glad that we were able <laughs> to make it. And, 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 and you all guys, you, you look beautiful. Um, just a couple of reminders. Um, today is Communion Sunday, so for those that are watching us online, if you don't have your elements with you, now is the time to go and get them. Um, get water, milk, juice, a cracker, a cookie, um, a donut, um, and uh, just make sure that you have those elements for the time of communion. If you're worshiping online, please go to our website, dobbinschurch.org, and uh, do the check-in. If you are watching us on Facebook, please um, like our page and leave a comment so we know that you were here. And if you like what we're doing, and you want to be part of all the excite, exciting things that are happening here, I invite you to express your gratitude through your offerings. And please remember that the offering plates are outside um, near the exit, or you can also go to our website, dobbinschurch.org, click on the Give button. It's convenient, it's easy, and it's secure. We are thank you, thankful for all of you and for your gifts, and may God continue to bless you so we can continue to bless others. Don't forget, I hope that everybody has on their calendar, the next Saturday from 3 to 6, we're having a family fun day. Don't, don't go to the salon that day, ladies, because we are playing water games. You're going to get wet, okay? So, um, so please, come up, bring your family. If you have grandkids, bring your grandkids. Um, all your family, we have games for everyone, okay? So not only the kids are going to be uh, playing, um, but we also are going to be playing with them. There's going to be music. There's going to be food. Of course, you know, food. We're Methodists. They have to be food. Um, <laughs> and there's going to be a lot of fun. And most importantly, we're going to be all together, right? And uh, so uh, please don't forget, next Saturday from 3 to 6, we're all going to be here in the back. Um, having fun. And now I have a special announcement, and I'm going to ask um, our brother, uh, Dennis Brisky, to, 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 to please come here. With, oh, you, li you need Liz. Oh, okay. Well, this one here? Yes, yes. Oh, Liz, he needs you here. This is, looks like a magic trick. I need my assistant. You know, <laughs> people who know me know I just hate microphones. Nothing. <laughs> just sit down. Huh? Sit okay. I want you to jump here. Um, good morning. So a couple of months ago, I was asked if I'd be interested in a, a ministry. And so couldn't think of a name for it, but it's going to be called Hooked. Right? Yep. What we're going to do... Starting on the 13th of July, it'll be a Tuesday. Every week we're going to go down to the end of Union Avenue and we're gonna have a little, whatever's in my head, and then we're gonna fish. <laughs> now here's the thing. Initially it was gonna be uh, fathers, grandfathers, and grandsons. It's gonna be anybody who wants to come. And if you are an adult, you will need a fishing license. They're $22 online. If you're a seasoned citizen, it's 12 bucks. <laughs> I like the 12 bucks with tax $13. So I encourage you to come down. We have, um, I've been collecting uh, donations of fishing rods and stuff. So I have about 15 rods and reels that people have donated to me. So if you want to come down and you don't have a fishing pole, that's no excuse, okay? So bring your kids down. Um, I'll supply all the tackle. I'll supply all the bait. If you want to bring something to drink and all that stuff, you bring it yourself because I'm not doing everything. All right? <laughs> so that's going to be pretty cool. 
here I have the microphone, so I want to say something. <laughs> Quite a while back, we were all like in a confusion, you know. So I can't tell you how wonderful it is to be in here and see smiling faces. Isn't it wonderful? It's like amazing. If you were to told Pastor and Liz they would be in a little river town hanging out two years ago, they probably would look like you like were crazy. <laughs> The blessing that they have brought to, I know, me and us has been incredible. I mean, who would ever know that I would have a 23-year-old buddy <laughs> who I joke around with at work sometimes, you know? It's, who got a nickname the very first week she was there? Should I reveal it? Can I reveal it? Yeah. The boss came in and said, I walked in and she said, don't worry about it, man. Top Dog's in here. <laughs> so Liz around Ricardo Dolman is called Top Dog. <laughs> you got my thing here. Anyway, but uh, as much as we needed them, I believe they needed us. And I want us to remember, I know we pray for them and all, I want us to really keep our arms wrapped around them because I watched this lady walk into the room, it's like the Holy Spirit's following her like a vapor huh anybody see that besides me yeah. and I'm just taken aback by it so anyway <clears throat> I'm going to hang up the microphone now but before I leave I'm going to pray with these two can I do that yes please All right. Here, stand up. father God I cannot explain how wonderful it is that you know that these two folks have come into our lives and that the unexpected blessings that we never see coming, but you know are coming, and they just they just expound and explode around us. And uh, and I'm very thankful. We're all very thankful. And I pray that you would just continue to guide these folks and guide us as we continue to make an impact in this town and with your people. Uh, we love these folks, Lord. We know that. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Amen. All Amen. I have <laughs> Happy Treason Day, you ungrateful colonials. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to wear makeup the next time that Dennis have an announcement. I know that, like, right? Live and learn. Um. Whew, I am thankful to God for being here too with all of you. Um, I always said uh, I don't deserve so much love and so much blessing, but um, God is a God of grace. And it pleases him to place us in places that, oh, that place us in places? Is that okay? Okay. To place us in places <laughs> that that he knows that we're not only are going to receive but that we're also going to give because that is just the main point of all of this right of this journey but i'm not going to um, keep talking because then i'm going to preach and i'm going to preach later and i think that we have another announcement vince are you going to make me cry too uh, probably. oh my gosh okay <laughs> vince have an announcement for all of us this morning Let me see if I can, can get it to you. Uh, you got it, Vince. Uh. <laughs> Good morning. As unaccustomed I am to public speaking, uh, I was reminded when Dennis was talking, Janet and the pastor are like the same people. Every time they get up in the morning, their feet hit the floor, the devil says, oh, no. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Janet's like that, too. The devil goes, says the same thing. She's up. But uh, we have a little surprise for you. The pastor and I have conspired against you. Don't worry. It's a good conspiracy. For the people at home, I am so sorry you can't share in this. But as you leave tonight or as you leave this afternoon, uh, you all get a red, white, and blue cupcake. 
So enjoy. It's very rare that the 4th of July happens on a Sunday. So we decided we're going to celebrate a different way. The three things we do well in this church, we pray, we sing, and we eat. <laughs> so pastor takes care of the prayer, Steve takes care of the singing, and I take care of the eating. <laughs> Happy 4th of July. Thank you. Thank you, Vince. When Vince says that he was going to give the, the cupcakes uh, when we leave tonight, I was like, whoo, nobody told me that. <laughs> but let us, let us prepare our hearts and our minds for what we um, came to do here today. I know that it's been a long time of announcements and a long time of um, uh, us um, witnessing to what God is doing, but now it's time for us to open our hearts and open our minds so we can um, worship God, so we can pour our, our hearts and our lives this morning. Uh, let us pray. Almighty Lord, your name is glorious and wonderful. You are an amazing God. You are the Alpha and the Omega. You are the creator of all, and we glorify your name. We invite you to our lives today. Lord, we want you to move. We want you to touch us. We want you to transform us. We want you to feel your presence. We want to be filled with your spirit and your holy power. Let everything that we do today and every day be divinely guided by your power. May the manifestation of your spirit be present in our lives always. God, open the doors to heaven and bring us your abundant blessings. May your joy and your gift and your grace overflow within us today and forever. And all we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. Let us worship. Good God Almighty, I hope you'll find me praising your name no matter what comes. I know where I'd be without your mercy. So I keep praising your name at the top of my love. Oh, I can count the times I've called you to read some book in the night. And you showed up and you patched me up like you do every time I get in. Forget you keep coming down. You ain't no way you'll ever let me down, down, down. Good God Almighty, I hope you find me. Raising your name, no matter what comes. Cause I know where I'd be without your love. Is he God? He's God. He is good God Almighty. You say your love goes on forever. Mercy never stops. So why would I assume to be somebody that you're not? I sun in the morning. I know you're gonna be there every day. So what a Make me be 
this morning 
and our sister, because I have a lot of brothers and sisters. <laughs> uh, yeah, and, and she's proud. <laughs> I don't, I don't know if my brother, my siblings will say that, but. <laughs> but I'm glad you do. <laughs> the scripture reading is from Exodus 14:19. Then the angel of God, who had been traveling in front of Israel's Ooh. army, withdrew and went behind them. The pillar of cloud also moved them in front, from in front, and stood behind them. The word of God for the people of God. Praise be to God. So short. Um, I forgot where I put my water. I don't know about you guys, but I'm here, like, I'm cold, I'm hot, I'm thirsty, I'm shaky, I'm like, I have everything. I, I can feel the presence of the Holy Spirit in this place in such a way. Whew. Whew. So it's, it's a short, it's a, it's a short um, verse. But it's really, really, really powerful. And today we continue our sermon series, Road Trip. And uh, our spiritual journey sometimes is, uh, feels like that. Like when we go on a road trip, we make plans. We need directions. Sometimes we get lost. We found U-turns or detours. There are rest stops and there are uh, must-see places, Right? And last week, we talked about how God called us and how difficult sometimes it is for us to listen God's calling and how we need to kind of like quiet other voices that surround us and even our own voice in order to actually listen to God and go to the place that he's inviting us to go because he already has prepared that place for us. But when we're taking a road trip, the journey matters as much as the arrival at our destination. Every road trip should include a can't-miss stop. So something that you can't miss, something that you, you, you have to stop there, right? Along our, along our journey, along our route, uh, when we are going on a road trip, right, we have to mark those places, right, that we want to see, but also the ones that we cannot miss this place. And, and something that we cannot mi miss in our journey is the move of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And, and for those that watched uh, uh, last week, and they were here last week, um, you know where I was, and here still I am in the corn maze, right? with my map in my hand, and I'm not gonna deny it, at the beginning it was pretty easy, and uh, you know, it wasn't that many turns or anything like that, and it looks like pretty simple, um, and, and, and it was easy to follow, but no many turns, and, and, and here I was like walking, and I was kinda like really confident, right, and I'm like, I got this. It's like I really do. And I was looking, looking at people passing me, you know, going the wrong way. And I'm like, look at them going the wrong way. I got this. I'm going to be out of here in no time. And I'm going to be outside eating while the rest of the people that I was with, they will go outside. But as I went, it got more complicated. And I found myself going in circles. Every time that I will look at that map, and I said, okay, now I'm going to turn this corner, and here I am on the second section. And when I turn the corner, it, here I am, where it says start. And I'm like, whoa, how how that happen? Like, I'm again in the same place that I, you know? I was, I was in, 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 in walking in circles, and I remember a particular time where I was so sure, so sure that I was on the right path, that I was kind of like, even like fast walking. You know, I was like, like in Tim Fit. I was fast walking, and I'm like, okay, now, now this, is, this is the moment. I, I, I got it. I'm going to go to the second section, and I'm going to be one step ahead, you know, of everybody else. I'm going to be right there at the end. And then I take the turn that I think that I was the turn that I needed to take in order to get to the second section, and I found myself in a dead end. I was so frustrated. I was so frustrated because I felt the need to advance. I needed to advance, and I was tired already of going in circles. 
And in that moment, I was looking at the map and I was so frustrated, I really want to rip it off and throw it to the side. And I heard people on the other side saying, look, look, we found it. I'm like, what? <laughs> That's where I need to be. That's where I need to be. How many times we find ourselves like doing that, right? We see other people and say, that's where I need to be. I don't need to be here. I need to be there, right? So I decided to do something that, um, if this is like the shows, kids don't do this if at home. Don't do this, okay? This is only part of the story. So I decided to break the rules. And there was only one rule. Do not cross over the corn walls. That was it. They actually didn't give us any other rules. Now that I think about it, I'm like, I can think of a lot of other many rules, but that was the only rule that they gave us. Well, a, 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 along with the instructions of you're here, go there, and, you know, good luck. So, so I decided to do that. And... Um, and as I was doing it, because they are kind of like a pretty thick. And, and, and so you have to, of course, walk through the horns, right? And then they are big and there are a lot of them. It's thick. It's, it's, not, it's not a simple task to do. And when I am doing this, I find myself falling flat on the ground face first. My glasses are all twisted. My phone flew out of my hand. The map was on the other side. And a couple of people were there looking at the whole thing happening in real life. And here I am with my face in the ground like this. Like my glasses all twisted. And I know that you're thinking, I know that you're thinking, oh, well, you know, I'm pretty sure the pastor was embarrassed, you know, that the people still had like falling and, you know, there were people looking at it. You know what? For your surprise and my surprise, I was not embarrassed. I was ashamed. I was ashamed that people saw me doing what we all knew that was the bad thing to do. That was wrong. I was doing the wrong thing because I just wanted to get ahead. I was ashamed. And of course, as you can imagine, I got up very quickly, right? I, I act up like if nothing happened. You know, I, I pick up my, my, my phone and my, and my map and I dust myself, right? And, and, and in a way, I was able to take all the physical, like all the visual evidence that I felt. But there was one thing that I couldn't get rid of. And it was that feeling that I did something wrong. That was inside of me. You see, that's the part that you need to remember. If you do something wrong, then you're going to feel bad. <laughs> so sometimes when we are in our journey, God leads us to places that we don't understand why are we there. And usually when we find ourselves in a dead end of our lives, we find ourselves looking back. We find ourselves wanting to go back to reach out to our old instincts and tactics in order to resolve our present situation. When the people of Israel were finally out of Egypt, the pillar of cloud and the pillar of fire was with them. God's spirit was with them, guiding them and protecting them. We talked about that last week. But then they found themselves in a dead end with the Red Sea in front of them and Pharaoh and his armies behind them. And this is what they did. They said to Moses, was it because there was not graves in Egypt that you brought us to the desert to die? What have you done to us to bring us here out of Egypt? Didn't we say to you in Egypt, leave us alone, let us serve the Egyptians? It will have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the desert. 
these people, these people forgot something that sometimes we too forget. We are not the same people anymore. They were not slaves anymore. They were not alone anymore. And we are not the same people that we were before we accepted Jesus. We are not the slaves of sin anymore. We are not alone because God has claimed us as his own because Jesus Christ has saved us with his blood because the Holy Spirit is the pillar of cloud and the pillar of fire that goes in front of us. Amen. You can get excited and you can clap. God, God, God rejoice in that. You see, you see, it's important for us to understand that when we are new people, right? When we are a new creation, we cannot try to reach out to the past and the way that we used to resolve things now because it's not going to work. But surprise, surprise, verse 19, I told you it was... It was a little one, but it was a, a powerful one. Then the angel of God, who had been traveling in front of Israel's army, withdrew and went behind them. The pillar of God of cloud also moved from in front and stood behind them. And this is amazing. You know, I, I, I want to recap because I don't think that you guys... Um, get it or maybe I'm more excited than you but because I want you to be as excited as I, as I am I'm going to recap this because I'm not sure if you guys are we're not in the same maze here <laughs> you know these people saw the miracles and wonders that God uh, did through Moses so they were slaves in Egypt right we, 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 we know the story we're there so they were slaves in Egypt they cry out to God after 400 and He's like, no, I don't know, remember. 430 years of being there. Yeah, you, you were close. You were close. I saw you in your eyes. I saw you that you got the answer. He don't like to show off. That's what happened. He don't like to show off. He's my star student. I just, I'm just saying, so. <laughs> in Puerto Rican. <laughs> okay, so. So these people, these people were in Egypt, right? And they were, be, they were uh, slaves in Egypt. And then they, uh, God sent Moses to free them, to deliver them. And, and they see a series of pl uh, plagues and a series of, of wonders and miracles that God will perform through Moses, right? And, and, and finally, finally, they are out of Egypt. They are not slaves anymore. God is now with us. He's walking with us. He's in front of them. He's guiding them. And when they find the first obstacle, this is what they do. They look at Moses and say, why do you took us here? We want to go back. We want to be slaves again. Can you believe that? Can you believe that? But you, you know what happened? Sometimes, sometimes when we are struggling, Sometimes when we are in dead ends of our lives, we get used to it. We get used to it. And then when God is doing things in our lives, we cannot even see it. We cannot even see it because we are not aware, fully aware of God's presence and who is with us. But these people, they were not dealing with any other God. They were not dealing with any other kind of people. They were not dealing with a king. They were dealing with the I am, the one and only, the alpha, the omega, the beginning and the end. They were walking with the spirit of God like you and I are. The scripture says that the Holy Spirit moved from the front to the back in order to protect them from the enemy that was coming. And I'm not going to debate that. But I also would like you to consider that maybe also the idea of the Holy Spirit moving back was for them not to turn 
around. And that is what the Spirit of God does in our lives. It moves. The Holy Spirit moves in our lives. Sometimes in front of us to guide us, and sometimes behind us to protect us from going back to slavery, from going back to where God already took us out from the bad habits and the life that we had before and we have already been free from. And yes, it's true. We are all humans and our flesh desires sin, right? We, 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 we make mistakes every day. God knows that. We know that. We cut corners. We break the law. We go back. We complain. We don't see God working in our midst. But the Holy Spirit empower us to desire to be faithful to God. If we let the Holy Spirit move in our lives, you can be sure that the Holy Spirit will move not how you want, but how he knows is best. Sometimes you don't see it in front of you. And sometimes we question, why God is not here in front of me? Because he's in the back. Because he's protecting you from something else. Because sometimes he's protecting us from ourselves. From wanting to go back to whatever was easier. But before all these beautiful and amazing things can happen in our lives, before we can see and we can sense and we can be aware of the Holy Spirit moving in our lives, there is one stop in our journey that we cannot avoid, that we can't miss. This is a must-see stop in our journey, and that is repentance. Because when we fall flat in our faces and feel ashamed, we can be sure that if we repent, the Holy Spirit will help us once again to get up and to continue our journey. You know, this idea of, of walking by the Spirit is it, 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 that no matter what happened, no matter what's happening, no matter what is the dead end, no matter what is the problem, no, no matter what is the Red Sea that is in front of you, or no matter what army is coming behind you, you know that the Holy Spirit will continue to help you to walk, to take one step at a time. But repentance starts in here. I know some of you think that it starts here. But repentance starts in here. There's got to be a decision. And that decision is going to transfer to our hearts. And when it's transferred to our hearts, then it will flow through our, our lives. You see, today we are invited once again to the table. This table that is a symbol of unconditional love, grace, forgiveness, restoration. And Jesus and all the disciples gather at the same table. They all share a meal together. A meal that Jesus himself prepared for all of them. John was there, but also Peter and Judah were there. You know, these two represent these two represent what repentance of their mind is. But only one was able to transfer that repentance into his heart and throughout his life. They both, one denied him, the other one betrayed him, but only one 
was able to understand the concept of grace, the concept of forgiveness. For some, for some of us, repentance is a, is a tough spot. And we don't want to stop there. For some of us, sometimes we think that because, you know, I've been in church since, since, since I was born. You know, my parents were in church, my grandparents were in church. And we think that repentance is not a stop that is necessary for us. But believe me, it is. It is. And it is an important one. And it's a required. And I know that some of you may think, you know what, Pastor? You know, I did that stuff already. And uh, I am so thankful. I have Jesus in my life. I don't have to stop there again. But let me tell you once again that you are wrong. Because this stop of repentance is a stop that we have to do continually continually every single day of our lives because every single day we are encountering dead ends in our lives and most of the time like you can see like what I did we fall flat in our faces because we always strive first our way but it's not until we're actually aware of what we have done. And it's not until we repent that then we're able to be free again and listen and be able to let the Holy Spirit move in the front or in the back, but always with you, always with us. And I want us to stop in repentance for a moment. And I think that this Sunday where we celebrate this table, it's a good Sunday for us, for us to think about our lives, to think about our actions, our words, our thoughts, to think about our post on Facebook or Instagram, to think about the comments, to think about our silence, to think about how we see the world and how God sees the world. I want us to, to take a couple of minutes. You can bow your head, you can close your eyes, you can look up, whatever you feel comfortable, but I just want you to have a conversation with God at this moment and to look deep inside you and ask the Holy Spirit to guide you and to see all those things that you need to repent. I want you to look in the mirror of Jesus Christ and say, Jesus, Help me to see where I am wrong so I can repent and your Holy Spirit can start moving in that area of my life. If you think if you think that you are tired of going around in circles in your life, and if you're catching yourself going back to old habits and behaviors, to old tactics, if there is something that is not letting the Holy Spirit move in your life, I invite you to make the necessary steps. And say, Jesus, Jesus, come to my life. Come to my life. It doesn't matter if it's the first time or the second time or the third time or it doesn't matter what how many times. 
Jesus will continue to renew his mercies in your life. And you know why they renew? Because every day, every day we make mistakes. And every day, God forgive me, it's available for you and for me through the blood of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Now I want you to pray with me, the prayer of confession that we don't have. Okay. But I'm going to say it, and you guys are going to kind of like repeat it in your mind, okay? Because this is the way the Holy Spirit wanted. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with all our hearts. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. And we have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. And we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I have good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proved his love for us. In the name of Christ, you are all forgiven. Amen. Amen. And on the night that he gave himself for us, he took the bread, gave thanks, Give it to the disciples and said, This is my body, which is given for you for the forgiveness of sin. After the supper was over, he took the cup, blessed the cup, gave it to the disciples and said, Take, drink. This is my blood of the new covenant, given for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. And now we are invited again to the table. And in the Methodist Church, the table is an open table because this is Jesus Christ's table. So take, eat, and be thankful.
Christ is risen indeed because he lives in you and in me. Amen? Amen. God is good. All the time. And all the time? God is good. Ah, if you thought that I forgot, mm -hmm, I didn't. <laughs> I love that. I love that. I don't know if it's going to get old, but <laughs> never, right? Never. Never is going to get old. And now, ah, now go. Filled with the Holy Spirit. And if you don't see it in front of you, don't worry, because I am sure that he's behind you. But he is with you. The blessing of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit may continue to guide you and may continue to, continue to uh, help you to proclaim that Christ is risen. Share the message of God. Share the message of the good news. Share the message of salvation. Share the message of the gift of the Spirit, but also let us share the message of reconciliation. Amen. 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 And now, I don't want to go. <laughs> and now all the ones that want to stay with me, yeah, man, we can. <laughs> and now go home. Have fun, be blessed, stay safe. <laughs> yeah. Let the king of my heart be the mountain where I run, the fountain I drink from, who is my song. Let the king of my heart be the shadow where I the ransom for my life, who oh, is my song? You are good, good. Oh, you are good, good. Oh, 
Mark. <laughs>